All right, what is going on, Financial Movers? This afternoon, I'm going to be talking with you about Norwegian Cruise Line Holdings, ticker symbol NCLH. Now, they're currently trading at $29.87, and I am recording this in real time, so this price will probably fluctuate on us. Uh, the stock is down 4.48% today, and that's after reporting some earnings this morning. So the company reported some pretty bad earnings, but that's really no surprise in the cruise industry right now. Uh, the Norwegian did report an EPS missed by 17 cents and they beat on revenue, which is interesting. So they beat on revenue by $6.23 million, but revenues came in at $9.58 million, down 99.4% year over year. So that beat on revenue, uh, I guess that's good. Take it as you will, but it's not saying too much. Now, the company did give some guidance as well going into 2021 outlook, and it was pretty much no guidance at all. They just said that they will continue to report a net loss for the first quarter ending March 31st, 2020, and they will continue reporting a loss until the company is able to resume voyages. So that's kind of guidance, kind of not, but well, you know, it's just not good. Now the company did say that they're suspending voyages through May 31st across all three brands as well. So at least no cruising till June of this year. And they did kind of pat themselves on the back for swift execution of financial action plan by raising $6.5 billion from various sources, which is good because it helps them withstand a prolonged voyage suspension. But they are going to have to be paying a lot of interest on that, I'm sure, throughout time, especially for as long as they aren't sailing. Now, Getting over to the technical chart of Norwegian Cruise Line. It actually doesn't look all that bad. So you're going to want to stick around for the technical levels on here because I'm actually interested in trading Norwegian Cruise Line. I have been in and out of the cruise lines many times. They have very predictable patterns. So before I get started, I'm going to get into the fundamentals of Norwegian first and ask you to hit that thumbs up button, hit that subscribe button, and hit that notification button for me so you never miss out on another analysis. And let's just jump straight over to their consolidated statements of operations. So they got their three months ended coming in for the quarter and then they have their year ended now they got their revenues coming in up at the top with total revenues coming in at 9.5 million dollars which is down that 99 percent from 1.4 billion dollars on the year dropping to 1.2 billion dollars in total from 6.4 billion dollars so definitely a tough year over at norwegian now because those revenues are down they have been able to cut a lot of their operating expenses such as fuel, food, commissions, etc. So total cruise operating expenses dropping from $887 million down to $206 million for the year, dropping dramatically from $3.6 billion to $1.6 billion. So good management over there, really trying to cut costs as much as they can as these revenues are getting demolished. Now, that brings their total operating loss in at $546 million for the quarter. So that is a massive loss for the quarter. Last year, they brought in a total operating income of $1.1 billion. This year, they're at an operating loss of $3.4 billion for the year, which brings that total net income at a loss in at $738 million for the quarter. $4 billion for the year. That is a dramatic loss compared to that $930 million they brought in for total net income last year. So it is hitting Norwegian hard. But let's get down to that balance sheet as well. And so their balance sheet, how does the strength of the company or the health of the company look? They got their December 31st, 2020 up at the top and then the December 31st, 2019 comparing it year over year. So they got their assets at the top and then they got their liabilities in the middle of the page. Now they were able to increase their cash and cash equivalents from $252 million up to $3.3 billion. But I'm sure there was some debt taken out for that because, well, we know they're not bringing in much money, actually no money at all. Now that brings their total current assets in at $3.5 billion, up from $730 million. Total assets coming in at $18.3 billion. And then they got total liabilities coming in at $14 billion. So total current liabilities at $1.9 billion, which was decreased from $3.5 billion. Uh, but then they got total current assets at $3.5 billion. Now, they got a lot of expenses, though. So let's take a look at this. They have total current assets 
at $3.5 billion. And they had a total loss for the year of $4 billion. So total current assets won't be able to cover another year of them if they have to pay for all these expenses again. Now they do have a lot of other assets such as property, uh, that property, their cruise ships, et cetera, coming in at $13.4 billion. So total assets in at $18.3 billion. And I'm sure that they wouldn't be opposed to raising some more debt again. So taking a look at their long-term debt, long-term debt increased from $6 billion up to $11.6 billion. That is a lot of debt that the company took out that they're not able to pay right now. And guess what? Whenever they have debt, they do have to pay interest on that. So on their revenue sheet, their interest went up for the year from $272 million to $482.3 million. And that interest is just going to keep ticking up the longer they can't pay for it. Or if they don't take out more debt, the way that they're going to cover all these expenses is to dilute the shares. Okay, so that dilution of shares has already increased uh, from 2019 up to 2020. So expect some more long term debt to be taken out over at Norwegian or the dilution of shares if you're an investor over there. There. Uh, but you know the the, the horizon is kind of here. You know they're saying that the, the the light is at the end of the tunnel for the cruise lines. So if you're bullish on the future of the cruise industry, then right now at twenty nine dollars and forty three cents for shares of Norwegian may not be a bad deal, considering the fact they were trading up at sixty dollars per share before the sell off last year. So. On the technical side of Norwegian, they are pretty easy to figure out in terms of trading, okay? So they bottomed out at nearly $7 in March of last year, and then they've just been trading in this upward sloping channel. And anytime it hits a resistance at the top of the channel, it kind of sells off. And anytime it gets to support at the bottom of the channel, it might consolidate a little bit, fall through it just a tad, and then start to work its way up back to that resistance. Now, I don't believe that right now is a good time Time to pick up Norwegian Cruise Line. They just came off of a bounce on that support on the channel uh, down at $22, $23 just the other week. And since that they were there, they increased all the way up to $32, increasing up 40% in just two weeks time. So right now I would prefer to see them kind of fall back down into this channel and then pick them up whenever they can start to get back on that channel support at about $24. That's how I've been trading these cruise lines. Uh, Royal Caribbean Carnival they're all kind of trading similarly right now and if you're bullish on the cruise lines and you're not quite in them yet then I do think a further pullback is needed to get into those so if you got anything out of this video be sure to hit that thumbs up button hit that subscribe button and hit that notification button and good luck out there financial movers it is tough in this cruise world